I'm Charlie and this is a tutorial for the Computer and Networking Security Courses Lab 6. In this lab we're going to connect some systems up with the virtual private networking, capture the traffic, and turn it in. Let's get started. As usual I'm going to start the tutorial here on the on the courses homepage. Off to the left under Course Tools we will find the Online Labs link. we we'll click on this link to go to the Online Labs section we want to pick lab number 6. This is the lab we'll be working on throughout this tutorial. So let's click this link here. And that will take us to the Toolwire Live Labs page. And we need to scroll down to this lab access button uh, link here. Let's click on this link and it should take us to this workstation. The first thing we need to do in this lab is create a remote connection. So let's go up to our ISSA VM server farm RDP folder here. Let's uh, launch, let's double click this folder and click on the target w2k8b.rdp file. So let's get that started by double clicking this file. Go ahead and click on the don't prompt me again checkbox and click OK. And that'll get us started. Once here we need to log in as the administrator so let's click on administrator and then type in the password that's provided in the guide. So let's get the password in. Once that's done, let's click this arrow here, and that will get us started. All right, once the desktop appears, we need to start the server manager. So I'm going to show you to do that. It pops up uh, here automatically, but I'm going to show you anyway. So click on Start, and on the right here, uh, you'll see Administrative Tools, and then Server Manager is in this here. Uh, right there. So if you were to click on server manager, this window here would, would pop up. Let me move it here a little bit. Now what we want to do here is scroll down on the right so we can get to the roles section. We're going to add a role. So let's scroll down here until we get to the role summary section. And here we go, role summary. And off to the right there is an add roles link. Let's click on add roles here. and there's some dialogue here for you to read. It's not necessary to finish the lab but I highly recommend reading anything before you click buttons. So there's the next and then we want to find network policy and access services. Let's check this box and then click next and here's some more great information to read. I recommend reading through that. When you're done there go ahead and click next and here what we want to select is the network policy server. So let's click that checkbox. And then we want to click this below at the routing and remote access services. Let's check that box. And these two boxes will automatically be checked. Technically you could check each one individually or just one. But in this case for the lab we want both of them done so we just might as well check the, the, the box above them. So uh, just click next when you're done there. And uh, here we're not going to make any changes, just click install. There's nothing to change. Go ahead and let this finish up. This will just take a moment. Okay, now I do have a warning here that pops up, but that doesn't affect the lab, so just click close. And now here we want to. Uh, we, we actually want to work on, let's make this a little bigger here, you'll see right up here is the the roles section, let's click on roles. In this particular case you can see that the the nodes under roles, that's expanded. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit and show you what it would look like if you just popped up here. Now just open it and you'll see the first node which is network policy and access services. So let's select that and the first thing we want to do is go to the right and scroll down to system services we get down here, let's find the Remote Access Connection Manager under System Services. We want to select this one and we want to get it started. So off to the right, let's click Start. And we can verify that it's been started here under the Status column. You'll see it's running. So once that's done, um, we no longer need this open. So let's go ahead and close this. 
Now we need to start the network policy server. We do that by going back down to the start menu again, click start, go back over to administrative tools and find the network policy server application in this list. I'm going to click that and here you go. Let's move this a little bit here. And then under the the getting started section you'll see this uh, standard configuration right here. Under that we want to click this drop down box and find the radius server for dial up and v or VPN connections and that's the second one right here. So let's select the second one here in the list and then underneath it go to configure VPN or dial up. Let's click that and under this particular section we want to go to the virtual private network VPN connections and select this one. We don't need to make any other changes here. Uh, this name right here is just fine so we'll just click next. And here we're not going to make any changes so we we'll just click next. Here we want to make sure that the Microsoft encrypted authentication version 2 section is checked so if this box is not checked go ahead and check it now and then click next. Here we're not going to specify groups, so click next. We're not going to specify any filters, so we can click next. Um, the encryption settings, however, we do want to make sure they're all checked. So if they are not checked, please do so. Just come up, you have basic encryption, strong encryption, and strongest encryption. And make sure all those three boxes are checked, and then we can move on to the, the next section. So when we get here, we're not going to make any changes, just click next. And click finish. Let's go ahead and close this out. We don't need this anymore. All right, now let's go down to Start Menu, Administrative Tools, and here we want to find Routing and Remote Access. Let's get this to click here. <clears throat> and here's the actual one in parentheses, local. It may be different. It may not be named the same for you, but it'll be local will be in parentheses there. I want to right click on it and click on configure uh, and enable. Click next and then go down to custom configuration. Select this one here. Click next. We want to select a VPN access. Check this box. Hit next. And the VPN access, go ahead and click finish. And here's some more dialogue. Like I say, I always recommend reading everything before you just click buttons. So click OK when you're done there. And we want to start this service, so we need to click on the Start Services button, or Start Service button. Let's click this. And that'll take a second. And the when this window goes away, it'll take a second, but this one will go away as well. There we go. Now let's go back here and right-click on it. And you'll notice that um, it starts to populate some nodes underneath it there, but go ahead and click Properties. And what we want to do here, let's scoot this down a little bit. We want to click on IPv4. We're going to set up a pool of addresses. So go to Static Address Pool, select this one, and then click on Add so we can add the pool. We're going to pick a, a range of starting and ending addresses to actually use in our system. So let's type in 1720. Let's see, this is going to be 17200. 250. So let's get that in there for the start um, IP address. Two fifty. And then the end address is one seven. What is that? Let's see. One seven two. Now in the guide it says uh uh, 172.30. Um, I made a mistake there, but it will work nonetheless. We'll still get the three IP addresses that we need. So let's go ahead and click OK. Actually, we only need one, but when all that's completed, you can just cl click OK, and we're done there. Let's get rid of that. Now we need to just minimize this this connection, and let's start the next one, the Target Windows 01 connection. Let's get that started. And let's go ahead and fill in the password here and log in. Once that's on, click OK. Let's get started here. Okay, 
Now, we don't need to do anything with this connect to server. We've seen that in previous labs. What we want to do is go down to the start menu, click on settings, go to network connections, and here we're going to create our VPN connection or, or make that connection. So let's go here to the new connection wizard and double click this icon here. We're going to click next to move on from this box. And here we get our three different choices. We have uh, connect to internet, connect to the network at my workplace, or set up an advanced connection. In this case, we're going to connect to the network at my workplace. And click next. Here it's a VPN, so we want to pick virtual private network connection. Select this box here, and then go ahead and click next. Under company name, let's go ahead and type in VLabs here. Keep it simple. Click next. And we need to type in the IP address, to, which is 172.30.0.6, and get that right this time. That's important. Click next. And here we can go ahead and allow it for everyone's use. So select everyone's use and hit next. Okay, and once that's done, let's add a shortcut to the desktop in case we run into trouble and then click on finish. And there you go. Now in this, oh wait a minute, let's go ahead and um, we need to get Wireshark started. So let's get this um, network connections window out of the way here. Let's shrink it down. Now let's find the Wireshark icon. It's, um, here we go. And we're gonna fire up Wireshark so we can start to monitor the traffic for the the VPN connection. So let's get Wireshark started. So just double click on the icon. This takes a second to get to get going here. All right, once it comes up, under interface list, we want to click on the Citrix Systems interface to monitor. Let's click this. And um, we need to minimize it, but I'm going to maximize it first to get, there we go, and now I'm going to minimize it. And now we need to go ahead and log into our our VPN connection. Okay, click connect, and very quickly we should be connected, and there's a little dialog bubble here that lets us know it's successful. And let's go down to um, the start menu here. Click run, and we want to type in CMD. If it's not already in your, your run box here, type in CMD and hit OK. And we're going to actually look at the connection information. This is the the quickest way. So let's make this a little bit bigger here because there's a lot of information going to pop up. Let's type in IP config slash all. Hit enter and that'll give us all of our some high level information about our connections, uh, about all the connections that we currently have. So we have our, um, so you have your Windows IP configuration and information there, your Ethernet adapter student, there it is, and then PPP adapter VLabs. And there you go. And there's the VLabs information. Those IP, that IP fits within that range that we had typed in earlier. So that um, that's pretty much done with that one. So let's click the X to close out on that. And then we can bring up Wireshark. And what we want to do is let's go ahead and stop the capture. So click the stop capture button here. And now that that's done, we need to sort by protocol to make this easy. So let's go ahead and click protocol and that will sort it. And we need to find the, um, the protocol listed as the PTP, it's PPP space comp. So let's look for that here. So let's get up, there we go. And we start to see them now. Once you've found those, we can go ahead and take a screenshot and send that screenshot into the instructor, or you can actually save the capture as a capture file, as a PCAP file, and then transfer that to your desktop and send that off to the instructor. There have been some difficulties with the file transfer link, so a screenshot is sufficient in this case. That concludes our tutorial. Well, I hope that tutorial was helpful. If you have any comments or suggestions, or if you want to see any other tutorial made, please leave a comment below or send an email to charlie.tutorials at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.